Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to introduce polygons and talk about some of the properties of polygons and the definition of polygons. And then I will also introduce uh, quadrilaterals and some of the types of quadrilaterals and how we define them. We're going to save properties of those quadrilaterals and proving those quadrilaterals for a later video or later videos. Uh, but right now we're just going to introduce polygons and do some definitions. So let's begin by talking about polygons. Polygons have some properties and one is that they are plane figures. That means they lie in a single plane. Notice plane is spelled P-L-A-N-E, not A-I-N. So they are plane figures and they lie in a single plane. And they consist entirely of segments. The consecutive sides intersect only at endpoints. So each vertex must belong to exactly two sides. And the consecutive sides must be non-collinear. And polygons are named by any vertex and then proceeding in order around the polygon, either in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So, for example, uh, something like this, a figure like that, is a polygon, okay? Assuming that these are all segments, okay? If they're curved, something like that, not a polygon. Almost looks like a puzzle piece. So something like a puzzle piece is not a polygon. Oops. It's not a polygon. Okay. So here we're something that consists, consists entirely of segments and the sides intersect at only at endpoints. So let's just assume that's straight. Those are polygons. Now something like this also is something like this. Well, that's clearly going to be a polygon. But if I drew a segment here, now that's no longer a polygon. Or if I went like that this figure is no longer a polygon because it crosses each other. Okay, sometimes something like that. Not a polygon. These are all things that are not polygons. Okay, because the consecutive sides must be non-collinear. They intersect only at endpoints. Here we've got multiple things intersecting at an endpoint. Here we have multiple segments intersecting at an endpoint. Okay. This one's curved. So lots of examples of what polygons aren't here. Now a convex polygon, which we'll be working with most of the time. Convex, each interior angle is less than 180 degrees. Okay, So each one of these interior angles is less than 180 degrees. Okay, doesn't necessarily mean they're all congruent. But this one, this interior angle, is more than 180 degrees. That's more degrees than a straight angle. This is a concave polygon, where one angle is greater than 180 degrees, more than a straight angle. So, and I think of concave, I think of something that's caved in. Polygons have diagonals. Diagonals of a polygon are segments that connect two non-consecutive vertices. So going from this vertex here, okay, let's name our poly A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, naming that polygon. And each one of these, A, C, and A, D, and A, E, and A, F, and A, G, are all different diagonals of this particular polygon. And of course, we could do that, draw those diagonals 
from every single vertex. Okay, and I'm not going to fill this whole thing in, but we can continue that all the way around. Now, BC, of course, is not going to be a diagonal because those are consecutive sides. It would connect consecutive sides. Okay, we're con connecting non-consecutive sides here with our diagonals. Moving on to quadrilaterals. Just going to define a few different types of quadrilaterals. We'll save the properties and, and such for later on. But a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, so it's a four-sided figure. Any four-sided polygons quadrilateral is a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So these arrows mean those particular sides are parallel. So if I labeled my parallelogram here, we would say that AB is parallel to DC, and we would say that AD is parallel to BC. Okay, and we know that by the arrows that are on the diagram here, telling us that it's parallel. A rectangle is a type of parallelogram. It falls under the parallelogram family. It's a parallelogram with at least one right angle. And that's all we need to define a rectangle right now. Okay, a parallelogram in which at least one angle is right. That is a rectangle. Okay, I know you know that all the angles are right, but we don't have to worry about that right now. We're going to get to that a little later. That's going to be in the next video. A rhombus is also a parallelogram. So, it's a parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel. In which at least two consecutive sides are congruent. So, something like that is a rhombus. It's parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and then we have two consecutive congruent sides. And that's all we need for a rhombus. Now, you may know that all four sides are congruent, but again, that's for a later video. A square is a parallelogram that's both a rectangle and a rhombus. So our square, it's parallelogram, that's a rectangle. So it's parallelogram with one right angle, and it's parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent. So right now, that thing is a square. That's all we need uh, based on our definitions. It's both a rectangle and a rhombus. Parallelogram with one right angle makes it a rectangle, and a parallelogram with two consecutive sides congruent makes it a rhombus, so it's a square because it fits both the rectangle and the rhombus. So that's the end of our parallelogram family. Now, a kite is a quadrilateral, not a parallelogram, in which two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So it's just a four-sided figure in which We have two pairs of consecutive sides congruent, but they're disjoint. So we have, you know, AB and BC are not congruent, but BC and CD are, and CD and AD aren't, but AD and AB are. So that's that whole disjoint business, um, disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent. Another kind of quadrilateral is the trapezoid, and a trapezoid is definitely not a parallelogram, but it is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So we might have something like that. And those parallel sides are the bases, and generally the, the top will be the upper base, and we'll have a lower base. Okay, so that's a trapezoid. These two sides, not parallel. And finally, the isosceles trapezoid, 
it's on the trapezoid family. It's in the quadrilateral family, but notice again, it's not in the parallelogram family. So an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid. So my bases are parallel. And the non-parallel sides, or the legs, are congruent. And then we'll talk about uh, upper and lower base angles, A and B might be the upper base angles. And C and D are the lower base angles. So that wraps up all we have here um, on polygons and quadrilaterals. So our quadrilaterals are the trapezoid and the isosceles trapezoid, the kite, and the parallelogram. And then inside the parallelogram family, we have the square and the rhombus and the rectangle. So make sure you have those diagrams in your notes with those notation marks. And we'll work more on this when I see you in class.